About 45 minutes straight east of Tulsa, Oklahoma, lies another one of Oklahoma's hidden treasures. Welcome to Sycamore Springs Ranch. This week, it's going to be a wild ride. Believe it or not, I grew up here for several years when I was a kid. My parents lived here in the early 60s. We had a, a small piece of the ranch you might, or property that was part of it then, and it was right on the edge of the creek. When I was a kid in the early 60s, my parents moved from Collinsville here, and there was an old house, an old farmhouse right there. And when we was here, it was more than my dad could take care of because he worked in Tulsa at American Airlines, and he had to drive back and forth every day, and my parents decided to sell it, and it really broke their heart. And I told them after that they wished they could have it. And I said, well, someday I'll buy it. My dad taught me the very first thing. He said, son, there's no such thing as can't. You can do anything you want to do as long as you set your mind at it. It was after both of my parents was gone that I had the opportunity to buy the original part of the property that we had. And I bought it, and that was fall of 99. I've slowly done a lot of things here around the house, around the buildings, that was things my mom and my dad wanted to do, but back then they couldn't. My mom had always said, I wished I had a zoo over there. And of course, we was, we was little. And I said, well, maybe someday we'll have some, Mom. I built the horse barn up here. My dad always wanted to build a horse barn or just a big barn up there, and we couldn't. So now it's there. Of course, they're not here to see it, but in a way, they, they know I'm doing it. Everything here, when I first bought it, I started building it. And when I say start building it, I, I uh, actually done the work. Everything I done, I try to, to be like a visionary of it, you know, to the tune of when I built this house. You know, it's kind of funny. I come here and set a five gallon bucket around, and, and I would sit in different areas to just to visualize how it would be looking out a window because I wanted a pretty view. With all the other buildings, you know, like the lodge, the cowboy cabin, the bunkhouse, if you look at every one of them and go out and sit, they're very peaceful. A lot of homes or houses is, is a house, but it's not a home. You know, but you can go in all of these and they're homey, as I call it. You know, you walk in and, and they feel good. You know, you just feel good enough you want to sit down or you want to stay for two or three days. And, you know, it, there's a lot of people that's been here that after they leave, they want to build a, a cabin like this, want to build a house like this. And, you know, it's comfortable. You know, they've actually went into a building, something that gives them a different feeling that no house has ever given them just because of the homey feeling. You know, it, it does. They're just rustic buildings. So what's this lodge here, Jerry? This one is, is really, that's what I call the lodge. It was the uh, first building I built, just a, kind of an entertainment area for the hunters. I'm pretty much a bow hunter, if you didn't know. I love to bow hunt. Looks like you're a pretty I, good shot, too. <laughs> <laughs> I try to be. All the mounts and all the buildings and stuff that I've taken. There's five different buildings. It'll sleep like 41 people. I rent them out by the day, by the week, whichever. I like the serenity of it. You go outside, especially in the evenings or early mornings, and you hear the, the turkeys coming off rooster going to roost. You hear the, the bull elk will start bugling, or you hear the psychic deer and the red deer starting to roar, and then it's kind of cool. It's very peaceful. I mean, I like it. We really don't hunt anything just around these buildings here. There's a couple hundred acres here around the, the buildings, and I keep a lot of exotics here just to kind of let people kind of see what's here. And besides that, a lot of people like, like, like to take pictures.
When I, I first started just trying to figure the figure out the animals I wanted to have on the ranch, I had to kind of look at the ones that could handle the geographics of the area. This is Oklahoma, and we have a lot of ticks, you know, and, and sometimes our winters are cold and a lot of freezing, but the majority of the time they're not. But then again, there's a lot of the animals, the, a lot of the, the, the antelope species and some of the deer species is the thin skin that they can't handle a cold. You know, and then there's a lot of them that can't handle the ticks. So I, I had to be kind of selective of it, you know, and, and that's kind of where I started with it. But the ones I have around the house, like Japanese psycho deer, red deer, hinds, fallow deer, they're pretty adapted to the area. And then if someone comes down here to enjoy the ranch, if they're staying in some of the buildings or they're just coming down for an event, you can come down and they can enjoy the animals and, and while they're here. You know, it's like in the, in the preserve part where we do the hunting. We have it now where you can actually go ride horses in there. And it's kind of like a ride through animal park. You know, instead of driving a vehicle, ride a horse, ride a mule. And it's kind of neat to go one on one, just ride right up to them or ride close to them and take pictures and enjoy them. Pretty amazing stuff. You know, right here at Sycamore Springs Ranch, they're having an exotic sale. And look around and just see how much metal technology goes in to be able to handle the wildlife like the ones that are here today. I've been in the business for going on 25 years. So uh, we started out back in the, in the early 80s when the ostrich and the emu and the rat tie business was real big. And uh, we kind of lived through that storm and we've moved on and, and, and the industry has really grown in the last 20 years. And we're more into the hoof stock and more stable animals that have more of a, a, a regular market than just the fads that come and go. A lot of our animals come in as much as a week or even 10 days, two weeks prior to the sale because a lot of them are trapped or, or uh, gathered off of some big ranches. We have facilities to hold those animals for any length of time we need to before and after the sale. They, they will come in, they will receive an identification My primary job is here is to tag everything and uh, make sure everything can leave here and meet the state of destination requirements. Hey, you missed me. Who's it? Who's it? Hey, those binders need to go the other way. Most of the United States is uh, brucellosis free. We used to have to test, do blood tests for brucellosis or Bain's disease. Now the main thing is TB. Most of the uh, uh, ruminants and all that have to be TB tested. And that's a mare, right? Now we have had a couple little baby zebras in here that were just, just as docile and, and gentle as they could be. But 90% but of them, uh-uh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why are we in there? last sale they had, we probably had 40 or 50 water buffalo, and they came off a of dairy. Uh, I didn't, wasn't even aware they had water buffalo dairies, but uh, just about all those were bred, and they brought top dollar. At times, we'll have giraffes, uh, 
and, and animals such as that. And it takes a special facility to do what, what they do here at Sycamore Springs. It's probably the best one in, in the country as far as exotic facilities. We have over a hundred buffalo pens. There's nowhere you go that they've got pens equipped to handle water buffalo the way we do. We had over a semi-load of water buffalo that were delivered direct off the range. And we ran everyone through the ring with no casualties to the animals or the employees. And that's saying a lot if you know water buffalo. Jerry has spent a lot of time and a lot of money going and looking at facilities and handling, as, as we do something here, if it don't work, if a gate swings the wrong way or there's something that he can do to make it safer for the, the animal or the employee, either one, he implements it before the next sale. It's a joy to work here. I, mean, I go very few places that have facilities like this. Well, that's one of the main reasons I come here. It's, it's everything you can see, it's, it's, it's marvelous. And they do a good job here. There's always plenty of help and anything I ask for, they do. Sycamore Springs Ranch definitely has it all, from RV hookups to cabins to stay in, professional bull ridings, rodeos, concerts, not only that, but four times a year they have an exotic sale. Actually, I can hear the auctioneer going now. Come on, I'll show it to you. Yeah, it looks like they already started. First thing you do when you get to a horse sale or an exotic sale is get you a buyer's card. The buyers will come in and go upstairs to the, the sales office, and that's where you, you get your buyer's number and everything. Every, every buyer has a number. And as the auction progresses, you'll notice that we're charging to a number. We don't use people's names. We're going to sell choice on them, guys. You, you pick the one you want or both of them. They can home raise us some babies. They'll both put color on the bar. Some of them. 60. 60, 75. We start with a lot of miscellaneous items, taxidermy, uh, western art, uh, the furniture. We had, we had some real nice horn and cowhide furniture. We'll sell back hides, cow hides, uh, a lot of, of just odd and end taxidermy work, uh, some North American, some uh, African. Uh, then we kind of move on into our mini donkeys, mini horses, our llamas, our alpacas. Uh, we go from that into our exotic cattle, which can consist of anything from mini zebus to Watusis, Longhorns, Scottish Highlanders, then into our bison, American buffalo, and our water buffalo. We have a, a real good bison. The, the bison market right now is real good. Then we move into our African hoof stock, and that is, uh, consists of a lot of different animals. We sell a lot of zebras, uh, which would be something more common, but then you get into our mouflons, our ibex, uh, markhors, then into all the antelopes. There's over 150 different subspecies of antelope, so you'll sell anything from black buck to, you know, gimsbok. Uh, then we, we move into more of our North American native rams that, that you see, some of the big sheep. A lot of times you'll see things at our sales that they don't have at the zoo. I mean, it, we, we charge an admission to get in at the gate, and if, if you've got a family, it's, it's a, a neat trip to bring the family out and, and just come sit in the crowd and watch because uh, there's no telling what you'll see come through. The 
Hey, it's awesome just to be here at the exotic sale. It's like being in the middle of wildlife right here. The exotic sale they're having today has buffalo, elk, emu, rams. Over on this side, there's a uh, zebra, water buffalo, llama, everything that you can name in wildlife is right here. I think Sycamore Springs Ranch definitely pulls out all the stops for their exotic sales. When the sale's over, we, we have a line and a crew that loads out. It, it takes very little time to get your stock as soon as the sale's over. Uh, you, you just pull around and we drive through the barn so everything's loaded stress-free right there in, the, in either the drive-through or at the hoof stock chute where it is designed to handle exotic animals. Steve, we're all out here as farmers and ranchers to make a living. Uh, the best ways to help that is saving money. Tell me a little bit about the, the hay max and how it's, it's gonna save me and you and everyone out there a little bit of money. Well, there's many t styles of this type of feeder out there. This is just one of, the, uh, one of the many. And basically the way this works is you're gonna get about a 33% savings uh, from your hay. So what they say is for every three bells you save a bell. The nice thing about this feeder is it keeps the hay up off the ground. On a typical feeder, you've got the hay on the ground and where it sets on the ground will mold out Cattle, horses, they're not going to eat it. It also takes that, that bell, and instead of having it right beside the opening where the animal grabs, when it pulls that hay out, half of it falls on the ground, they stomp it in. When they grab that mouthful, half of it's going to fall inside and still stay inside the feeder, and so they can still eat that feed while it's still inside. It's got the sheeting on the top, which is really nice on a feeder of this style. The sheeting keeps the animals from coming over the top and grabbing it. So all they, where they have to grab it is from the inside. Well, it's all a pull and grab, so what they have in their mouth is what they're eating. What drops stays inside this line, pretty much another feed trough at the bottom as well. Yes, sir. I bought that mule in 1989, and in fact, he's retired right now. He's up here in front of my house. He's 29 years old. I used to go bear hunting in New Mexico two weeks every year. And I mean, it's a, a, it was like a ritual. I mm -hmm. made sure I went. I loved to bear hunt with hounds. And I hunted with an older gentleman, and his name's Ray Johnson, and, and he's gone now. But I used to love to hunt with him. He's such a neat guy. Mm -hmm. And he just, he got me hooked on bear hunting, and I went every year. And I took that mule out there and, and hunted with that dog, and I ended up buying that dog. When I first got the ranch and I first started it, you know, I, I um, kind of started building it to where <clears throat> I could do some hunting and it's pretty much not for me because I've been very blessed to be able to go places to hunt. But I have a lot of friends that hasn't had the opportunity I have. So we started high fencing the ranch. You know, the majority of it, there's, there's a good piece of it that's not. But we have it where my friends could come out and, and do some hunting. And then once they did, then we had other people start wanting to know if they could hunt, and then it kind of grew to where we offer hunting now. And it, it's, it's pretty neat. It's real rough. You know, it's not, it's not a walk in the, the park, you might say. These old Oklahoma Hills, is, a lot of them straight up and straight down, and, and it's pretty rough. You know, I, I uh, used to do all the guiding on it, and, and boy, I wore a lot of people out, you know, and then, then I kind of let the younger guys do it now. It's for everybody. You know, anyone can come out here and enjoy the ranch. We're centrally located in the United States, in Oklahoma. You know, you can actually come from either direction, north, south, east, or west, and you can come to here, come to the ranch via a four-lane highway, all except for the last four and a half miles. And the closest town is Locust Grove, which is four and a half miles north, so you, take, you can take a four-lane highway all the way to Locust Grove, exit there and then take a two lane to come to the ranch. The location is great. You know, we have, we've had people from all over the United States come to do hunts, you know, and, and um, all of them enjoyed it. You know, I've had chief of police, doctors, I've had just guys that worked the third shift and got off and as soon as they got off, they drove out and they had an awesome time. You know, they enjoyed it. 
and it, it's, it's enjoyable for everyone, everyone that, that loves the outdoors anyway. I want to have something that anyone can enjoy. You know, it, it's something that, that maybe that someone else is at the time in their life can't build a ranch like this to where you have the things to do, but then again, they can come out and visit it for a weekend, you know, or for a day, they can have the opportunity and, and you know, that, that uh, just makes it to where anyone can do it. What a great ride this week at the Sycamore Springs Ranch. A beautiful location. Just to be out here at the lodges and see the wildlife, my suggestion, go to sycamoresprings.net and plan your next destination. <laughs>